Yeah, it's recording. Oh, I have to click on, got it. Okay. So last week we were covering a couple different topics. Uh, one of them was um, going through this um, metaphor slash model that uh, you suggested in terms of there being potentially uh, notable special frequencies where um, no. transition is easier. So you're using yeah. the, the metaphor was of a, a manual transmission. an automatic transmission. Ma a manual transmission. Yeah, so, or rather a manual transmission. There's places where you don't need to use the clutch. Like if you're between right. like- um, At the right moment, at the right, at the right uh, engine speed and, and velocity. And so if you're like straddling uh, what might be alpha or theta under its like natural yeah. rhythms, that actually might be a special place to be. And that actually might be a place to be that's associated with flow states and creativity. Right. And, and other kinds Integrating of- Integrating external and internal environments. Yeah, so- So they're one and the same at that. And we were talking about synchrony between systems like, um, two hearts beating as one, um, where it becomes one entity. Two people become one entity. Uh, hearts are beating synchronously and the bodies are moving synchronously with the heart. You're also talking about the nature of um, like internally versus more internally versus more externally focused attention and how those moving between those might become more seamless, more integrated. Right. So if we're having two people who are be, so configured to have this more seamless and they're, a couple. Yeah, they're confused, yeah, fused you have, together. You have this kind of Mobius strip between them. Yeah. Of, yeah. Good way of putting it. Yeah. Yeah, that's a very interesting, very nice uh, metaphor. I never thought of that. That's really nice, the uh, Mobius strip. Yeah, because the internal and the external is all the same. There's no, uh, you move. It's, in fact, that's a, a wonderful metaphor. It's perfect metaphor. That's exactly what I mean. That uh, it, there's, there's one surface between the internal and the external, just like in the Mobius strip. There's no, there's no outside in the, I mean, there's an outside of the Mobius strip, but the, the, the upside and the downside of the Mobius strip are all the same side. That's the same exact idea that, I, that uh, is expressed with when say the theta and the alpha frequencies are identical. You're also talking about um, a kind of evolutionary heritage involving um, harmonious coupling. Where, yeah. Like, going back to like the like sharks yeah. and like one sw one swish of the tail, one flow, like one pulse of water over the gills, one heartbeat, one heartbeat, and then this being this principle potentially being part of what shapes. Uh, the arrangement of different rhythms. Optimal, like, the optimal tuning of the body with the, with the different systems, that the, the somatic and the visceral are in synchrony. They're tuned together. This is probably a story at least 500 million years old around the Cambrian explosion if not in a way older, although maybe the specific rhythms got laid down yeah. around and that we deal with, you know, the principle though could go back to like our common ancestors, ancestors with C. elegans potentially, even if it's like- Well, I, I, I mean, the, the, the unifying principle might be uh, the, uh, that the, the optimal uh, neural processes are based on the bodily structure and and the functions so i mean the say the the what what is fit for a human in terms of rhythmicity is uh, not appropriate for a hummingbird because the the bodily structures the momentum 
of different bodily structures is highly different. And the nervous system has to be tuned, the, you know, for evolution, it's probably optimal to have the nervous system tuned to the bodily structures. I'm thinking we can't take this metaphor. It might be hard to take it too far because it's like, at first I was just thinking about like applying it to like the, the cognitive uh, affective engine, but actually locomotion, actually switching, like switching the, the, the eigen modes, switching the, the, the patterns of, um, it, it might actually be like even for moving around, like different modes for going at different speeds and, or in different ways. Sure. There might be some, like, it's actually. Sure. Look, I mean, if, if, uh, look at the, you know, the example, uh, there's a wonderful example with, uh, uh, say, seagulls landing on a post and they go, uh, go, 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 go. The, the vocalization is synchronized with the bodily, with the wing movement. It's go, go, go. So, um, you know, we would make a, a, a grunt, you know, if we, if we um, say, uh, push over a, a, a dead tree, you know, push it and then it gives and we go ah, like that. That's a different kind of timing, you, a different use of the body than uh, the, the, uh, the vocalization related to locomotion in a say in a, in a bird flying and as a matter of fact you know i was thinking that maybe uh the the fact that vocalization is synchronized with bodily movements in birds might be a basis for long distance communication between birds that is that um if another bird hears a particular call at a distance, they would recognize the what it represents in movement. I mean, it could be a kind of territorial display. Uh, there could be that kind of uh, communication based on the synchrony between different motor outputs vocalization locomotion they're synchronized it's this they, a very intense coupling between mind and body right. uh, for the sake of just getting the information aligned adaptively and, and for controllability and but understanding and understanding you're trans understanding uh, uh, co conspecifics in, in the species i wonder how much we're picking up on something a little bit like that in each other's voices well, um, do we communicate like, like we do? You know, there's there's a, there's a really interesting study by um, uh, Byers, Paul Byers. He was at Columbia. Uh, he had this film. I, I can't. I don't remember if you mentioned it. He has a film of three Eskimos standing around a fishing hole, and what he did was analyze um, in in high speed video, actually movie at the time. Uh, he analyzed their movements, their, their slight movements, just sh slight changes in posture. And, um, you know, one, one Eskimo was standing with a pole and he moved his hand down the pole a little bit. And the other Eskimo was sitting down on, on a stool with the fishing line in the, in the, in the hole, in the ice. And, you know, he, he adjusts his posture. And the third guy is is shifts his um, you know leg from one leg to the other because he was standing on you know one leg or the other, and what Byers showed was that when he when he analyzed when in time each of those moments occurred, they were all occurring. He if he he, he put in the alpha rhythm, twelve per second, and it turned out that each movement. There were many waves in between, many, many alpha periods in between. But when they when they made a, a slight change in their posture, it was they were all making it at, at the same phase of the this. Upstate. What was the upstate? With the upstate, 
yeah. So that and and he said that's a basis of social communication that we're on the same wavelength as a uh, you know as a as it were, even though you know it's it's not it, it was all virtual it's all virtual but they were all making whenever they moved it was always at some um, integer <laughs> integer period. I don't know how to explain explain that, but if you had an imaginary alpha wave going, whenever they made a movement, it would be at a particular at the same phase of this um, of this alpha rhythm. And you were saying that this is for alpha, um, and this was an update for me. Um, it, it's not just like a passive sampling from the environment, but it's also a peak sensory motor coupling. Uh, right, because that, that, that was Lindsley's thing with, with the um, the fastest reaction time. And that's a motor where they press the button. That's a motor response in response to the visual input, to the, to the strobe flash. You know, he told them, press the button as soon as you see the flash. I didn't realize so, that. And, and so that's, I guess it's, it's like a Mobius weave, like depending on how many Fisher people we have. Like each one is sending and receiving from the environment, moving and perceiving. Um, in some oh, kind oh, of, yes, in yes. some kind of, along some kind of wave when the communication is occurring. But, but, but probably, you know, maybe not everyone, but they're pretty, uh, these are uh, weakly coupled oscillators are- And, and unconscious, Uncon I mean, in this kind of, in that kind of social movement uh, was unconscious but they were all in tune with each other. Hmm. Unconscious, deep coupling of their consciousnesses and their unconsciousnesses. And, and, and the motor system, not only consciousness, it but the motor system. to be true, but what, is it not, it's not though. It's what you'd expect from nature. Like, but it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's almost like, you know, there's like a cynicism that comes up. It's like, no, but no, like, what would you expect? So the thing is that, you know, to maybe to the extent that we respond to that kind of stuff that has evolved over a million years, uh, that leads to optimal functioning, as opposed to if we interfere with that by, you know, external demands, uh, uh, then, then we we screw it up, and you know. So, so maybe the, you know, it's optimal to be able to uh, enable <clears throat> enable ourselves to be responsive to our unconscious um, signals, whether they're there and they're affecting us, and they're affecting even our motor, our, our motor responses, our motor activity. And uh, it's probably evolutionary, evolutionarily healthy to respond to that to the extent you know to at, to some to to respond to a period, but that could be interfered with by you know external demands you know like a traffic light, um, checking your phone, like uh, checking the phone, that, like broken, know, mo broken moderns. broken moderns. Broken moderns, yeah. I mean, it interfere all those kinds of external demands that are not related to our internal state. Um, they put a strain on uh, uh, the interaction between our internal and external parts. I wonder what that was like to like grow up into that. And to not be so symbolic and arrhythmic that we like outcompete that way of being like, what would that be like? Well, it's I like we can look at the look at the animals who don't have those kinds of um, external demand. I mean, like a pack it, of wolves it, hunting together. Pack of wolves hunting together. But on the other hand, you know, I mean, there are uh, certainly animals are confronted with external uh, realities demands. You know, like uh, rain, for example. You know, there that doesn't correspond to their. It it, it imposes uh, external demands, but then 
obviously they have succeed they have su survived rain they've survived cold and heat so uh, it's probably this probably there is great flexibility in in the systems good thing they're loosely coupled a loosely coupled yeah it's adaptive and, capacity to, adapt, to, yeah. adaptive capacity sure uh, there is adaptive capacity and you know probably the the more adaptive capacity that an organism is confronted with or on, a, on an evolutionary basis the more flexible they have to be and probably you know that's why that's why i think that um you know think of an example of a uh, a squirrel jumping from one tree limb to another better get and, that right. what better get that right better get it right uh and and uh, you know the distance between branches is uh variable and the the wind velocity at the moment is variable and they have to calculate how hard they how how much force they have to use to make the jump from one branch to another i mean that must be consciousness they must have a form of consciousness because it's adaptive to be able to make those computations so they would have both like the, the visual and also i guess on whatever branch they're on proprioceptive yeah they can basically they're all and somehow integrate between what they're seeing of the next one and the branch they're on and right. somehow take the information of how they're calibrating themselves and how it's moving even in the wind yeah and and how much they've eaten you know how 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 heavy or light they are i mean all these are factors that they take into consideration and before they jump it's so both, like a, you know that, because that's ballistic and they have to make a ballistic computation mm -hmm. so i'm sure that require that's i'm sure that's they're conscious at some at some level i mean it's it must be um you know recognition or uh, and even even recognition of their own species you know, it's got to be awareness. You know, animals have to be aware. It just, you know, and the more, the more complex their interaction with the environment is, the more the the more bigger their brains are. There's probably some sort of like embodied mental simulation of they imagine themselves doing it to some extent before they leap, and this is sort of like. Probably, yeah. that, it's like adjusting the actual deployment and maybe is even part of the mechanism due to like the overlap of the networks that like actually adjusts their jump. So there's like, uh, like, a, like they're going forward. There's like an initial, like peel off, like initial, like, what's this going to be like? And then they do it. Can I do it? Can I do it? Can I do it? Yeah. Is it, is it close enough? Do I have enough strength to, to get from here to there? To, to make the leap from here to there or you know to have a busted leg or, you know i mean i'm sure they make those computations they have to if they succeed to the extent that they succeed you know but that's been developed over millions of years and but one of the things you would want consciousness for is basically um to you don't have millions of years to learn the or rather you don't have millions of years of trial and error because you'll be there is in the terms of evolution but like you want to get it right you, you want your hypothesis to die in your head <laughs> you don't want to be yeah yeah you know. yeah it's a hypothesis testing <laughs> it has to be hmm. i mean that's not purely in inst quote instinctive it's got to be computed and learn and and adjusted and flexible it's a skill a developed skill seems like it the flexibility in terms of there might be like a natural amount of flexibility built in as long as you're close yeah, enough right. to this place but if you go too far 
the system might not be able to adjust. So it's like the 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 group like it's raining and like I don't know the wolves are calling each other or the 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 rat or the the um, squirrel is is like thinking can it make a leap? But it's like if it's within a certain range, you can do like some micro and maybe like macro adjustments of certain range. But if you're too far away, uh, it might be hard for like the this sort of um, dynamic recal like re or self organization by which you would adjust to to find the yeah. and 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 a young a young inexperienced individual organism uh, would fail would make a mistake would not make the correct computation and we would think that's cute you think you know, there's oh. a baby a baby doing something you know maladaptive as long as they don't kill themselves but uh you know if they make a mistake like that we think it's cute which brings up the whole thing about humor you know whole, the whole concept of what we consider to be funny but that's a whole different uh that's a whole different topic i actually like to loop around to that but it's just like if you're, little, <laughs> you're close to the ground you're not that heavy and you're covered in padding so it's like it's okay it's like there is, but if you were like, you know, a full, you know, I don't know, like you're, you're a full grown mountain goat or something, and you're trying to make the leap and your footing goes and you're like mid cliff, that might not be so funny anymore. That might, that won't be cute. That's just a tragedy. Right. I, I have a, interesting what you think is, I have, I have uh, a while back, I started wondering whether all humor involves the rapid alleviation of anxiety. Oh, yeah. Does that sound compelling? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Um, uh, or it produces anxiety. I mean, yeah, there's something about, and you know, what is anxiety? Anxiety is the anticipation or the expectation of something bad happening, something disagreeable, not. Uh, uh, something uh, undesirable happening. That, that's what anxiety is. Uh, that's, I mean, that's what I, that's what I think that um, according to Eric Fromm, uh, the, the, the psychiatrist in the 1950s with his book, The Art of Loving, he said, uh, anxiety is the fear of loss of contact in its various metaphoric and, and actual ways. So a fear of mm. abandonment or ostracism or uh, uh, rejection or criticism, all those things, uh, which is ultimately metaphorically the loss of contact with another individual, the mother, um, that is primordial anxiety. That would be a mortal the, threat for being so more a yeah the the and the ex the expectation that that contact will be lost is the essence of what he considered to be anxiety socrates shows hemlock over exile i always found that to be interesting mm, I, I didn't realize that like I never knew why he chose hemlock or why I didn't even, I didn't know he chose it. <laughs> I don't know either, but that just came to mind. I thought he had, yeah, he, he was given it. Hmm. The. Yeah. So humor, it may so, be, uh, if, I mean, say, somebody slipping on a banana peel. Uh, why is that funny? Because uh, it's something undesirable if it happened to us. But since it's not happening to us, it's a relief. So it's maybe the humor is the relief of the anxiety because and we we uh if we have to make if if we have to exert make it make make an exertion 
and that exertion gets resolved, it's a relief. And we may vocalize, like, let's say, uh, pushing over a dead tree. Push, 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 and then it falls. And we go, ha! We, we vocalize that success. It's a relief of the, it's an expression, it, it's an expression of, ex, it's a release of excess energy. Because we have, ex we have made an exertion, we're exerting our force against the tree, and then it gives, and we don't have to exert that force anymore. And so that uh, excess tension that we have built up is suddenly released. And we, we say, we grunt, or we say, ah, or we laugh. It's the, that laughter is the release uh, it's uh we don't net, we don't need to exert that force anymore and you know it opens up the 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 release valve and it's the expression of it's like it's easier to vocalize than to actually push so when we don't have to push anymore that built up uh, muscle tension results in vocalization. That's an expression of of our. It's an it's it's one way that we can uh, release the uh, uh, the the energy that we have uh, uh, commanded. You know uh, that we have uh, developed to. Um, to do something and then suddenly it's released and that could be a grunt or it could be laughter because the laughter is the same thing and so if we're tense because we know what's going to happen when the guy steps on the banana peel if it was us because we we know what we recognize what that is then we get tense because we know what's going to happen and then it happens, but it doesn't happen to us. So we laugh. It's like the principle of least action in physics applied to like neural dynamics in terms of like the, the, the least path of resistance, the least amount of energy having to be expended. It's like, it'll well, be the quickest, the quickest attractors like well, I mean, that's the vocal, you I mean the vocalization. The vocalization. So it's like, instead of like, actually like the, the, the it's a symbol. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. virtual, it's a virtual exertion. I'm wondering about like parallels now between um, like, like, so the way, you know, you were originally describing like climax is governed by this high threshold system. Uh, seems like there's a lot of similarity here in terms of like, laughter in addition to having this um um uh, efficient uh set of flow paths the efficient direction of energy but there seems to be a thresholding and i'm wondering if there's like a sim similar like brainstem pattern generator which has basically you don't want to like arbitrarily let it go just like the way you're describing like you don't want to like climax arbitrarily that would be a bad situation it has to be high thresholded and so right. if you're, especially if like you're a prey animal or, or any, if you're a predator, you just don't want to laugh at the wrong time. But then once you do, you go into this like rhythmic burst mode. And I'm wondering whether you are in this kind of same kind of ecstatic entrainment that you are in with, like we we're talking earlier about like the, 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 the eight Hertz contraction of like, was it the epididymis or whatever, or, or the, the, the uh, a, a bubble cavernosus bubble, muscle. Bubble cavernosa and like the 10 hertz at the rectum. I'm wondering if there's like a kind of you're generating this signal and being entrained by it. And I'm wondering if at laughter, there's kind of a similar sort of like bi-directional driving that like makes you fuse with it. I mean, the frequency, the, the frequency is of the laugh uh, is a carryover from the frequency 
well, uh, that that it's a, a it's a shift into a different system, a shift of the exertion. But but are you talking about laughter? What laughter after orgasm? Well, actually, that's an interesting connection. I um, mean, it may I be. A, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking just the, of like an the, rhythmi the rhythmicity that was that generated the orgasm. When the orga after the orgasm occurs, there's still residual rhythmicity, but it gets shunted to a non to a different system, which is the the uh, the I mean, and, and maybe it's the 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 energy buildup that led to the orgasm. Uh, doesn't immediately stop at orgasm, but it uh, the the uh, you said you've said there's inertia in the system, and now the uh, since the the or the muscles the the head, the big muscles the big body muscle leg back uh, uh, arm those big muscles that we used in the rhythmicity leading up to orgasm. Uh, now are no, no longer used and but that the inertia of that rhythmicity now is shunted to the vocalization system which dissipates the energy but it's it's dissipated uh at its own uh at its own optimal frequency which may be a little bit uh less have less inertia less momentum than the heavy muscles and uh, the, the so so but it's also rhythmic rhythmical and it just gets expressed through the through the vocal through the laughter or the vocalization that kind of vocalization but that i mean that would have to be tested empirically i think we should i mean you I, know what, what are the rhythms there, but i'm glad you took us there that's like um yeah so it, it's like you're having this um mm, yeah, the, the way that one can spill over into the other. I mean, I think it happens in the case of, of sniffing. You know, in the case of sniffing behavior, uh, that's exploratory sniffing behavior in the rats, where they, they, the whiskers and the, and the inhalation are synchronized uh, and, you know, and optimally synchronized with the heartbeat, like in the shark. Um, but then if they find food or if they find water, they start chewing or licking at the same frequency at the same seven per second frequency so the sniffing and the sniffing and and um, and whisker whisk the whisking and the sniffing are occur it's at seven per second and then when the animal shifts to drinking or eating the 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 link licking movements and this or the chewing movements are at seven per second also so it's like just shift. So it's like a pacemaker, like a clutch going from, you know, it's a pacemaker going from controlling the sniff, the explore, exploration and the eating and the drinking. So should I think, so I was thinking that like, so in that case, they're both already aligned at the high theta of, or the theta of, of the rodent. But in, in the case of laughter for at least a like human, that seems to be probably it look i think it's more like theta and the i guess the the sexual act might also be pegged there but then when you go into like it depends on which we're talking about so i guess it is that inter regime but i'm wondering is in, in like laughter should i think of that as like one ha is one like upstate or should i think of like a two events both the like the expression and then like the in-between, like even though it's like, it might be like, ha, 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 is that actually like six events and not three? Like if it's like gross enough in its, in its expression, how does the nervous system register that? Well, it's probably probably that it uh, links into the uh, reflexive respiration mechanism. I mean, there's some, is obviously some external driver that's driving the uh, the rate at which each ha is expressed, but then that is probably also 
um, I mean, it has to, it's probably integrated also with the, with just the, the uh, 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 inspiration, expiration reflex mechanism. The, so, so once the, the, once the exhalation is produced, then maybe the, it, it just, the, the reflexive reciprocal relationship between expiration and inhibition and, and inhalation uh, is uh, kicked in, is, is, is kicked, kicked in. So it's, you know, it's one, it's one rhythm triggering another, a different rhythm. If I'm really laughing though, even if it's just like, like, maybe that rhythm is, uh, it, it feels like, especially if like, it's a point where you like, you can't even catch your breath. Like, oh, well that, yeah. Objectively, I mean, it feels like two, two, like the inhale too is a salient event. It's like a, and then the- Yeah, but, but I, I it, it may not, yeah, I mean, I don't know if, if it's, if the same, I, you know, the I guess the question is, uh, uh, does the mechanism that produces the laughter exhalation also produce uh, laughter inhalation, or does it activate the exhalation reflex that then kicks in the inhalation reflex? You know, is it is it loosely coupled ox i guess the question is is it one oscillator you're at what the to 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 rephrase to paraphrase what you're saying is it one oscillator that is producing the the uh exhalation and the inhalation or is it is it two loosely coupled oscillators one that gives the trigger and the other that responds to a trigger by stimulating reflexively the opposing movement. Potentially modulating how much of an inhale you need. Yeah. So, yeah. But, you know, and probably in the example that you're- you're, the level of consciousness, those being registered maybe separately. Yeah. yeah. But but, to use your example of uh, when you can't catch your breath, maybe it's that the- uh, the intensity, the intensity of the uh, pulse is so great that it overrides the the reflex uh, mechanism, and you can't catch your breath because the the it's too intense for the the reciprocal uh, in expiration inspiration reflex. You know, because that's a basic thing. I, that's what that's what regulates our unconscious breathing. The, I mean, it's a reflex mechanism. We don't have to think about it. It's unconscious. We don't have to think about it. There are clearly, there are brainstem uh, inspiration and exp- exp- exhalation. Uh, there's a, a very complex uh, reflex mechanism in the brainstem. And actually multiple uh, expiration, in, in, inspiration reflexes. So um those are intrinsic, and they they operate when we when we're sleeping, you know, when we're unconscious. Um, so it, it's it, it's possible that they can be overridden by a powerful drive of, of you know an extreme drive, and you know that leads to our not being able to catch our breath because we're laughing so hard in those rare occasions. I'm really glad you took us here because like, um, yeah, I was actually just thinking of, of just, but thinking of an analogy between like the, the phenomenology and maybe, and maybe the mechanisms of orgasm and laughter, but this, uh, not just the, the similarity in terms of maybe their expression, but also their over functional overlap and the way that one can move between the other. Um, that seems extremely rich in terms of like, uh, so like like there, there, there's many ways that I might want to think about it. Like um, to the extent that like with the laughter or the humor model, that it is this anxiety that's been being released um, because some means has been found of recontextualizing it or, or, or moving your attention away from the anxiety provoking thing. But the, the, it seems like the, you might be like, have this tension building up during the sexual act. 
and then around orgasm that itself would trigger the i guess the the avalanche the the, the snowball of like the anxiety is coming down and so that would have itself this functional overlap with and mechanistic overlap with humor but also you're already it's not just that like the, the anxiety coming down is happening but you're already motorically in this general sense of the controller too being at the same it's attractor dynamics having this inertia they're already well placed to switch into the other like rhythmic entrainment with your body of laughter. So it's like, you're already heavily entrained by the sexual act and at orgasm, maybe it's you're, you're reaching peak entrainment. And then there you have this highly synchronized system already close to another one that you can switch into of, 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 of laughter and, 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 and experience. Yeah. It's, It's wild. <laughs> it's yeah. really wild. It's incre it, it, the complexity is really impressive. The 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 um, the the the, the commun combinations and permutations of different systems is really really uh, impressive. It's like it's, it's infinite. Complex. I would say it's infinite. What what? It's staggeringly complex, but it's also like really elegant. Yeah, it's, it's elegant. Yeah. In these principles, like like the the shark swimming, it's like these harmonic couplings. It's like these yeah, and the permutations of them, like you're saying, is yeah. You can hook into the link into them from different all different angles, input different perspectives. Yeah, yeah, it's really. Uh, I wonder with this impressive. So, so some people would like. Uh, push back against this idea of like inertia or discharge. But to me, it sounds completely like rigorous, especially if like we're considering like their evolution. But some people would say like, oh, it's psychodynamic. It's, no, I, I I mean, I think, you know, to call it energy and, and tension, I, I think of it in terms of very literal terms of muscle contraction, it, it, the energy, is the energy and the tension is muscle tension the feeling of muscle tension it's, it's not a it's not a it's not a, a you know it's not a flaky out there it's a you know real energy is is the um the force of you know it takes energy to push over a dead tree uh that's takes muscle exertion and force it's it's force it's it's voluntarily exerted muscle activity that's and that's what i'm that's what we're talking about with energy and and inertia it all has to do with you know how fast we can move our muscles because of the mass of the muscles and our strength and um, so you know that's what i mean by inertia and energy uh, and tension i i mean it in very concrete bodily terms in very it's, physical physical like bodily terms physical inertia as in like there is a mass and it has a velocity and there's an exactly energy. yeah it's it's, and, it's and not there's, it's, there's it's a not a, an abstract it's not abstract i'm not talking about you're abstract tension, energy you're talking about like spring constants along the muscle spindle and yeah i'm talking like, about physical yeah. stuff well I'd, I'd actually go also abstract in terms of like this is like you're just describing this like intense coupling of the neural rhythm and the physical rhythm and so you're getting these coherent attractor dynamics in among the loosely coupled ops oscillators and it isn't quite physical inertia but i i think it probably has many of the same properties in terms of like the steerability that like once it's established the switching it has like a momentum and an, an abstract kind of momentum yeah but it's all linked to the bodily system the actual physical bodily system i mean the Grounded nervous system yeah. the, the nervous system is is uh, is tuned to that it controls that you know if we we can't do that if if, if with, with significant brain damage so it's it's a it's a a, a, a close coupling between the muscles and the nervous system. So both controlling and of con uh, controlling and responding. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's 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 linked 
you know, think of, of, you know, all the things that we're talking about and the time it takes for us to do it and think of a hummingbird and what it can do uh, in, in, you know, in the same amount, in the same amount of time, it can go, you know, 50 times faster because it has so much less mass. Look at, I mean, you can, the, the wing movements in, in, in the hummingbird, we can't even see them. We can't even see individual wing movements, but those muscles are contracting and relaxing and contracting and relaxing so fast that they're beyond our flicker fusion frequency, which is what, 20 per second, something like that, the blur, then. 24 per second, what? So it's just a blur. It's just a blur. Yeah, so our, our, our nervous systems aren't tuned to a hummingbird's nervous system. And they wouldn't have to be because- the And they don't have to be because the- scales that we, the, which we the scales of the yeah. muscle, the muscle involvement is- we break ourselves if we tried that. That's right, we couldn't do it. Yeah. Physically, we couldn't do it. And so the hummingbird's uh, nervous system is tuned to its bodily, to its, the muscle, it's the sizes of its muscles which are much, much smaller and, and much, uh, uh, can move much faster than ours. So, you know, it's, it's not a question of whether it's the nervous system or the body. It's, it's, they're tuned to each other in, 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 in the various organisms and they have different optimal tuning. I'm wondering if we get in addition to this tuning you would expect both through evolution and development for this optimal coupling, whether there's like an even like another at a higher level expectancy where it's like you you have a sense for momentum you have a sense that like certain things will require like a certain amount of time to turn around right well, that way, well that's proprioception proprioceptive uh, learning i mean we spend all our our infant years learning all that stuff I wonder if this becomes like an intuition and a set, and, and I'm wondering if this like itself provides like another kind of momentum because of the, it's like you have the physical Newtonian momentum, you have the momentum of the attractor dynamics of the tune system. And I'm wondering if there's an additional momentum of your expectancy of these other momentums. Well, yeah, I mean, but we, we teach ourselves that it's, it's biofeedback during our infant years. When we we uh, the body's the teacher. Uh, we, we 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 learn. We teach ourselves how to lift a glass to our to our mouth. You know, we not too fast, not too slow, and to adjust to the whether the glass is full or half empty or empty. Uh, I mean, because we have to adjust our proprioception. And, you know, we watch babies do it wrong and we laugh, but that they're, they're learning, they're teaching themselves what is required all, in all these, how, you know, how we use our body that we, that's what we spend all our infancy doing. That's all we do is, our you know, we stick our, we, you the know, where do we, where, do, if we want to, if we want to suck our thumb, you know, we don't stick it into our eye. We have to learn, we have to teach ourselves what Something we have to do yeah. to get our thumb into our mouth or our toe, a big toe into our mouth. You know, we, 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 we are teaching ourselves all these things about inertia and, and time and, uh, you know, what, what our bodies are capable of doing and what they're not capable do, of doing. So I've been thinking somewhere along those terms that this having the body and as teacher might be a very special situation. Um, and that like, like I've been thinking like an artificial intelligence, how like we're just, we seem to be so much more effective learners than these systems. And I'm wondering if part of it is that you have this near ideal learning curriculum from the body and that it's like uh, the ability of the body to constantly be teaching the organism, both the thing that is controlled and, and the richness of the input and the constraints and the, and like yeah. forcing yeah. to learn this one thing, which is a common point for everything else. Yeah, but it's, you all, we also have to recognize that it's extremely complex. And that's why it takes years from, you know, from the time that we're born until say the time of the two, 
uh, or more. I mean, we'll learn that con continuously, you know, uh, as adults learning particular skills, uh, bowling, golf, you know, any sports, uh, con you know, relating our uh, the muscle tension, the timing, uh, the the uh, force, the the, the uh, time for time distance, all that required in all the in different skills. You know, I mean, maybe at the beginning we're really more focused at we're in our earliest infancy. We're really more focused on our body itself in relation to a simple environment but that but and and that in itself is extremely complex that's why it takes so long to learn it even if you're not using tools just like without not, tools just a, just our body i forget just tools. not poking your no, eye just, not yeah. you know getting your thumb into your mouth and not into your eyeball there's a lot of degrees of freedom on this thing uh, absolutely yeah. and it takes time to learn that you know and it's very funny to us to us to watch you know mistakes that the baby makes you know of sticking its finger into its eye you know, and crying, and then we, you know, not we can... strong. What? They think oh, they're not yeah. that strong, otherwise it wouldn't be so funny. Yeah, it's, yeah. So all that it takes a long time to learn that, and then we learn it. We continue to learn it. You know, in our skills uh, throughout life. It's, I mean, it's extremely complex, and that's why it takes so long. The the computation. You know, to, to compute uh, throwing a basketball from the end of the court into the, you know, to swish it into the into the basket. It's incredibly complex or to, to swing a swing a bat at a ball coming at you at 100 miles an hour and hitting it. When it's moving in an er, uh, erratic path, you know, a curve or a sinker. I mean, all those things, that, the, the kind of computation and the speed of the computation to adjust the body, the body, the, 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 this massive muscle, the, our, the mass of our muscles to, to move this heavy bat and our muscles uh, in the right position and with the right tension as this missile is coming at us at 100 miles an hour, you know, hardball. In, ba in baseball, and then to actually hit it with enough force to send it out of the uh, out of the stadium, you know, to hit a home run. I mean, that is an incredible, incredible complexity, computational complexity. If you just think about every every instant and how it's fast the computation is going on, yet, yet 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 learnable, just just learnable, and enough. yet possible, yet not pos chance. Yeah. And, and, and it's and really with impressive. We, we with play and sports, we, we keep bootstrapping our ways. That's right. We keep we learning. Keep. We keep improving because keep learning all the options. So I, I like um, like any direction. Like, well, the contingencies. The one direction I'd like us to go at some point soon is um, okay. So it's it's over an hour now. Oh, so I have to go. But the one place yeah. um, later is um, uh. Uh, quasi homuncular ideas of minds, like the the way that like minds. So I've been thinking that these embodied learning curricula have a legacy that's made basically em embodiment the fundamental organizing principle of of mind, and that it's it's the, it's the dominant dominant informational object in mind. Like to say that the mind is radically embodied is almost an understatement. And I feel like you have a very similar intuition and, and have developed ideas along these lines. And I'd like to uh, pick your brain about those later. So. Okay, I'm not, sh can you phrase it again in yeah. a concise way? I'm not sure yeah. what, what you're getting at. So um, I know you've uh, written things about um, like within the mind, um, um, things that are almost like homuncular like as like representations or organizing principles and part right. of consciousness. Okay. And um, I'm thinking part of the reason uh, that this might be like part of the reason we get there or this might be the case is because of the way that minds are bootstrapped in this embodied way. The way in which you have- Oh, I understand. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, so sure. I'd like to go into that territory at some point. We don't have to do it next sure. time. Sure. In other words, we- yeah. We think in bodily terms. 
I, I would put it that way, that our thoughts are um, uh, affected by our bodily structures. So something like that. But if, if that's what you... if, if It's the direction if, I'm driving. Okay, I got it. Okay. All right. Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> it's always here. interesting. You know, things I never think about. I mean, I think about it, but I, I never, you know, it's it's really very stimulating to have these conversations with you because I, 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 I you know, sort of, it, it it clarifies things for me. Me too. Good. Okay. So have a great week. You too. And see you next Monday. Same, same time, now. same station. I think so. That's what they used to say on the radio. Remember? I might try to live, but we'll see. What? I might try YouTube live, but this seemed to work. But Oh, I see what you mean. Okay. I'll try to see if I get that troubleshot before then. But. Oh, well, whatever. Okay. Have a good week. You too. Take Bye. care.